Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going over Q4 of the weekly contest 218, uh, minimal incompatibility. I, I had a lot of incompatibility with this form. I'm just kidding. Um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this form. I actually end up having a wrong answer here because I was just dumb. I left in um, a case that I thought would, would speed up uh, a base case. Um, but it ended up that it was not necessary. And also it was wrong. So it got me a wrong answer. And yeah, so the... Key thing to note about this one is just uh, n, or and n is sixteen, right? So n is sixteen lets you to do very brute force dynamic programming. Um, I mean, maybe not very brute force, but mildly brute force, and that's basically the way that I did it. Um, the the math that you have to accept is just figuring out all the subsets, and for me, most of the um, yeah, so I'm also explaining my thought process and not just a solution. So bear with me. I'll watch this on the fastest speed. But yeah, during the contest, I most of the time that I spent, I, mean, I end up spending about 15 minutes on this problem. Um, most of the time was in on coding. Uh, most of the time was spent on me proving that the balance is good enough. And then, and I was thinking about different ways of doing recursion and trying to make sure that you know it's fast enough, right? Um, and some of this is even though I'm only talking about this problem in this video, uh, an earlier problem on this contest, I had two time limited exceeded. So time limit exceeded was definitely on my mind. Um, but yeah, but the idea is that, okay, um, you know, you, n is equal to 16. If you take uh, n divided by k elements away one at a time, like basically you create one group at a time, then would it be fast enough, right? And the short answer is yes. You could actually do the math and it comes out to actually about, like if you have 16 choose two, um, 16 choose two times 16 choose four, or sorry, 16 choose two times 16, or sorry, whew, 16 choose two times 14 choose two times 12 choose two times 10 choose two dot, 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 over eight factorial. So that's kind of, um, the number of possible things if you have 16 and you need to divide it by in, them into eight groups of twos, uh, that would be the worst case. Um, so that ends up being about something like 2 million, uh, 2 million different possibilities and about 2.6 million possibilities if you do uh, f groups of four, roughly. Um, so that gave me confidence that brute force is the way to go, but I still have to implement it in a smart way because you cannot do it in a silly way right so yeah so the key thing to notice is that the bit mask of 16 or, or the power set of 16 to uh say so which is 2 to the 16 is just 65k right um most cs people are familiar with this number because it comes up a lot but yeah so 65,000. so we just have to process all the possible subsets in a fast way and that's basically what i try to do here um i'm, I'm gonna go over the 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 recurrence first, the dynamic programming part or the memorization part, and then we'll go over how to do the um, the other parts, right? Uh, the pre-processing to make it fast because um, because if you do a naive proof force where, okay, we have, we have 16 elements, let's just take two elements at a time. Well, that's going to be too slow uh, um, because, well, if you don't, well, even if you cache, it may be too slow because you're maybe um, doing a lot of duplicate work because um, you've already done it somewhere down the line. Like if you're trying to construct a set of two or three items and you don't know how, how to check for duplicates and stuff like that, um, you know, that's going to be a lot of work. But anyway, so this recurrence is pretty short, pretty sweet. Uh, I have a bit mask video to, in my tutorial. Look through my link. Um, I'll have it below or something like that. And yeah, so if you don't know how bit mask... Uh, uh, work, then you know I, I implore you to kind of look up that a little bit. I will go over it a little bit, but basically, bit mask here is just to denote you know mask is going to be a, some binary number. I'm just this is a random string, and that means that a one in in a digit means that um, you know nums one or uh, num sub zero is you. Uh, in my case, I've made it uh, is not used yet. Uh, but you could choose whichever the notation uh, is used because it is equal to zero, right? 
uh, and so forth. So that's the general idea about the bin mask. Um, and it allows you to do different fun things. For example, here I go for each sub mask, which we'll go over in a little bit. So for candidates, it just gives you, uh, let's say we have all possible subsets already in, in these candidates that we pre-processed and we'll go over it. Then for each sub mask here, uh, if, so this is a really weird way of saying it, but, but the idea is that, okay, if for every sub mask, if every bit is used, then we go do this other thing, right? And you could kind of work it out yourself. That's the beauty about bit masks is that you can actually see the logic once you have some foundation. So for example, you know, your mask is this, and let's say you just want to get two numbers, right? Uh, if, if your numbers are like this, uh, then that means that, you know, the, the N operation is it, going to be... The end operation is going to be zero except for where they're both ones, right? And since this is not equal to submask, um, that means that not all, ev all every bit of submask is used, right? Because if every bit of submask is used, then we expect this to be, you know, one in every place where submask is one. So basically, that's what this uh, if statement does. Um, and that means that basically what I'm trying to say here is, okay, if for each can candidate, if this candidate um, is possible, meaning that we haven't used any of the number, uh, then then we do this thing where, okay, so we do an XOR, and what the XOR does is now, given those those uh, bit mask, XOR just flips them, right? So let's say in this case, um, you know, now we have this, this thingy, this mask, and now, uh, okay, well, let's just say we start with one, uh, and this is a good sub mask. So this is a good sub mask. That means that we flip uh, this bit to zero and this bit to zero because you know we used them, right? So that's how I would phrase it. And then we have a pre-cache scores for this sub mask that we already calculated. And then if this answer is smaller than best, because when it minimize, we set that to best, and then we just return it. Um, and the LLU cache allows us to save the answer. Um, yeah. And we'll go over the complexity of this after doing the um, after doing this part. Uh, so yeah, um, so how do you pre-calculate it, right? So we look at every possible subset. Uh, so this is going to be all of two to the sixteen possible power set, or the power set, which is two to the sixteen possible subsets. Uh, so we have keep account thing. We look. We we just basically look at the mask, this current mask that we brute force from. We count how many ones there are, right? So that means that, um, you know, that because, yeah. So let's say if we want um per subset to have uh three elements, we just want we only care about things that have three elements in the subset. So that's basically what this does. It counts the number of elements that we're using, and then it counts the um or it checks whether that's equal. If it's equal, then we do the other rows that are in the d description, right? And what I mean by that is that, okay, you cannot have duplicate numbers. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, no two equal elements in the same subset. So, so I, I uh, you know, this is a standard algorithm, right? Uh, I, I put everything in a set. If it's in it, you know, then we add it and stuff like that. Um, yeah, we pretty much it and then if it's good then we that means that there are no duplicate numbers uh we put it in the candidates uh we we say okay this is a possible candidate the score is maybe terrible but it's a possible candidate because it passed all the rules that we did uh and then we set the score as you go to max uh of the number in the set versus the min which of course is the, the definition of incompatibility right so okay so this is good and all. This this pre-processing, um, as I said, this is going to be taking two to the n number of times, right? So this is this is uh, o of two to the n iterations. I guess actually exactly two to the n iterations. And and yeah, uh, in each iteration, we do a for loop through. Uh, 
well, we, we do a couple of for loops, but they're also going to be uh, n. So this is going to be, uh, so each loop takes n, oper uh, you know, all of n operations. So that means that total pre-processing time is equal to um, O of n times 2 to the n, right? And you could kind of, you know, I mean, I know this said that we put stuff in scores and stuff like that, but they use hash tables and, and you know, and all these are all one operations. You can check, check at your spare time. Um, cool. And then the big question is, well, is this too slow? Because in theory, if you do a... Uh, a worst case analysis candidate can have you know candidate can have um i guess two to the end it's not really well as we'll see in a second and mass could also be all of two to the end this this means that there's going to be all of four to the n n right that's way too slow for because for 16 that's going to be two of uh, that's that's not a factorial that's just me screaming really loud um right that's gonna be too slow because two to oh sorry four to the sixteen is two to thirty two which is like you know almost four billion right or four billion and whatever so well the tighter bound however is noting that well mask it's not exactly you can it's not all two to the end right um because you can if you do this one at a time then I mean. I, I don't really have a strong argument other than um, other than doing the math manually for a lot of numbers. Uh, I mean, you could you could um, I don't have the symbol form for that formula is what I mean. Uh, but basically, for example, my, in my head during the contest, uh, I I said, okay, uh, let's say refs, you know, n is equal to sixteen, k is equal to two. Well, what does that mean, right? Well, that means that there are eight levels of this, but it's going to be you could say it's two to sixteen, but a lot of those states are not possible, right? And what I mean by a lot of the inputs are not possible, right? For example, if you look at the pure uh, two to sixteen, um, you know, or it's, it's one possible combination could be, uh, let's say, uh, hmm, a lot of, I don't know, I didn't count. Um, so that, that's sixteen zeros, right? Uh, well. This is a possible input because it has an even number of ones. Uh, this is not a possible input because we have three ones, but three ones cannot lead you to the answer, and we have a we have an if statement that makes sure that they're equal size, right? So you can kind of uh, eliminate a lot of impossibilities to the input, right? So that's why it's fast enough, and also can on the other way as well. The submask and the candidates, right? Candidates. Um, this actually is not O of two to the n. I mean, kind of, but it's actually uh, n choose k, right? And n choose k is roughly speaking uh, n to the k. Uh, I mean, I, I know it's technically min of k and minus k. Okay, fine. Something like that, right? Um, so, but, well, one is that 16 is small enough so that it doesn't matter. Um, and then, Two is that uh, oh, right, and you could, you know, like in the worst case, it's going to be sixteen choose eight, um, like as the biggest number. Oops, what did I do? And sixteen choose eight is about twelve thousand. But in that case, you only have, you know, you also have twelve thousand here as the number of possible inputs. So, th so the numbers are really small when you kind of combine them. I think that's my. Uh, so that's the intuition that I had when I was solving it during the contest. Um, and that's why I was hoping for anyway. So cool. That's all I have for this problem. Uh, I had a, a silly mistake with respect to, I had an early if statement, just if, if n is 0 to k, I return it early, but it should be, instead of returning 0, I return something else. So that was just dumb. And that cost me five minutes. Um, and yeah, that's all I have for this problem. You can watch me solve the contest. Next. So much faster. So dumb. 15 minutes penalty. Jeez.
Hmm. So sixteen, right? <clears throat> Minimum possible somewhere. It's already too slow. Well, it's over fact eight factorial. Mm, about two million for proof force. I think that's actually doable. if we're able to do it in a good way. Hmm. If you're able to do it in a smart way, the force is actually fast enough, but... It's 15, so it's 2 and 8 is probably going to be the worst case.
Seven minutes. Hmm. This is actually not true, right? Say cups. Possible some of it.
no duplicates. Oof. Ah, oh, I knew that I needed to test test that case. I'm really careless today, to be honest. I clicked on one code, it's not doing anything. That's great. Uh expected zero one. Oh, it's because of this case, right? That is just dumb. I, I actually want uh I remember I needed to test that case and I didn't. That was also a silly five minutes penalty. Uh, hey, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this farm or other farms, and let me know if you have any questions. Uh, and I will see y'all next contest. Bye-bye.